Hi guys, today we're going to talk about um, the European Union. This first video here is just a real quick um, introduction, some background knowledge, as well as some key vocabulary terms that you need to know um, about the European Union before we dive into the details of this uh, concept. All right, so first off, when we are talking about the European Union, always come back to this analogy that we had talked about earlier, um, this idea of these fences, these backyards, these houses, where each individual house is a country. They have their own benefits, they have their own drawbacks, they have their own styles, but the idea of the EU is to take these fences down, create this common backyard. Um, so this is kind of something that we'll keep coming back to um, and referring back to that activity that we had earlier. All right, so a couple things. Um, one of the main things you need to understand about the European Union is the benefits when it comes to traveling. Uh, people today can travel um, between European countries real, real easily because of the European Union. So it's not like if you were to travel from the United States to Canada, you will be stopped by Border Patrol, you would have to show identification and passports. None of that happens between these European countries. Um, and that is a huge thing that you would notice if you were to travel to Europe. Um, and visit some of these EU countries. So what is the EU? So the EU is what we call a supranational organization with 28 members. So um, if you wanna take a moment and write down that definition, that's what I want you to understand about the European Union, okay? So it is a supranational organization with 28 members. So what is supranational? So a supranational organization is a form of international cooperation where countries give up some of their control um, that they have in order to work together to achieve shared and common goals. So that's what the EU is. Um, there are other organizations out there that are supranational, but the EU, um, that's what it is by definition. So again, here are your two terms. If you want to take a moment um, and jot those down in your notes, feel free to pause the video and resume when you're ready. So in addition to having these open borders or having the fences down with each other, many EU nations also have a common form of money. And we're going to talk about this a little later. That uh, form of currency is called the euro. That makes traveling um, even easier. And even though the EU countries do work together, you still need to understand they are separate countries. So they do have their own separate identities, cultures, uh, sometimes even languages, governments, constitutions. But the idea of the EU is that they're working together uh, while still trying to maintain some of that individual identity. Um, what we're really focusing on in this chapter is that there are these things that are happening within the EU that bring people together and unite them. But there are also things that divide and separate countries. So there's this you know, good and bad, positive, negative, and in order for the EU to sustain itself in the future, there has to be balance uh, between these two things. So the essential question that's on the board um, in class, as well as something we'll keep coming back to, is so what are these forces? What are these forces that causes people to work together and unite? And what causes these people to divide and not always get along? So the graphic organizer to the right shows you these two ideas, that the arrows coming together to unite and bring us together, and the arrows pulling apart and separating um, from one another. So some background information before we kind of get going. We kind of have to know where Europe has been and, and why the European Union even exists in the first place. So the first thing you need to understand is going all the way back to some of the early civilizations of Europe, which you'll learn about in seventh grade, is there's one theme and that theme is conflict. There has been a lot of conflict in Europe um, historically over time. Um, the EU is really born out of the two major world wars um, that have happened uh, in recent history. So in the past, European nations have been completely devastated, decimated and destroyed because of these two world wars. So World War I uh, started in 1914, lasted for four years. Um, and killed 21 million people. And then World War, World War II began shortly after that um, in 1939, and it lasted for six years, killing 50 million people. And you can see between those two dates, there wasn't a ton of time to recover after World War I before World War II began. So after these back-to-back -back wars, and again, um, these were not just European wars, they were, they were widespread, 
but a lot of the destruction and a lot of the the um, battles and whatnot really took place on European soil. So the fighting after these two conflicts really left European cities, industries, economies, farms, um, transportation in complete ruins. I mean, Europe was completely destroyed. So after World War II, um, Europe wanted to make sure that that something like this didn't repeat itself. So how do we make sure that if this horrible, horrible things happen to us, how do we make sure it does not happen again? That's when the European Union is going to be born here. So here's an image of some of the rubble um, and destruction left behind um, after both world wars. So now that we have ended World War II, how are we, how are we going to create this, this peaceful future where we're not getting in war after war after war? So it took a while, but in 1950, on May the 9th, um, a French leader named Robert Schumann, he made a very famous speech where he suggested that European countries should actually work together. Um, and if they work together, they may not create war on each other. So he first started with something simple like coal and steel production. So he started with the economic aspect of this um, because uh, coal and steel were actually really needed um, industries and resources in order to rebuild Europe. So he said, let's work together on this um, and let's unite. Um, he believed that if uh, European countries were united and cooperated with one another, they would be less likely to make war on each other, which does make sense. It took a while, but a few years after Robert Schumann's speech in 1952, there were six countries that decided to join together and create something called a common market. So a common market is where countries uh, remove trade barriers, such as taxes and tariffs on items that cross between country borders, almost like open or free trade, if you will. So that was step one. Um, more countries joined after a few years. And then in 1993, the common market was renamed the European Union, um, and even more um, people joined it. So today uh, we have 28 members that are part of the EU, which originally started off as six. Um, so recently, the United Kingdom uh, has decided, though, that they wanted to leave the European Union. So back in 2015, I believe, um, there was a vote in um, Great Britain uh, that was open to the public and asked them if they would want to leave the EU or stay in the EU. Uh, people voted to leave the EU. This is known as Brexit or British exit from the European Union. Um, and this is something that's getting a lot of attention because the United Kingdom is the very first country ever in the history of the EU to make a decision to leave the EU. So currently, as of this recording, they are still part of the EU, but they are trying to figure out how to get out of the EU um, without completely ruining the economy. Um, so that's something we'll talk about a little bit later, but I wanted to just bring that up to let you know that that is currently happening. All right, here is a map of um, who belongs to the EU and who doesn't in Europe. So not every European nation is part of the EU. Um, some of that is by choice. Some of that is not by choice. There are some countries on here that want to be part of the EU, but they are not, um, their economies and their governments are not stable enough to join. There are very um, kind of strict rules and what it takes to become part of this group. Um, so our founding members are right there in the center part of the map in the green. Um, that's the original six that are part of the common market after Robert Schumann's speech. And then you can see the different waves um, that are color coded in the key um, and how these countries joined, uh, what year they joined um, and when they joined. All right, and that is it for just a real quick introduction. Um, you can be finished with this video. Make sure your um, first part of your notes are complete, and then you can move on to the next one.